Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul. I'd like to welcome you today to the internet broadcast of Albany Family Worship Center. Albany Family Worship Center is located at 3024 Kensington Court here in Albany, Georgia. Our service times are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study and 1030 a.m. on Sunday mornings for morning worship. We're going back into our sermon series this week, Are You Serious?, with the topic, It's Time to Get Your Holy On. You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 1, beginning with verse 15, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, that is, conduct. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And a lot of people hear that word, and right then they go to shaking their heads and say, Well, I can't do that, because they believe it involves some kind of perfection. Well, it doesn't involve perfection, but it does involve surrender. You see, God has called us out. We are holy because God has separated us from the rest of the world. We are different than everyone else because we've had, number one, we've had the blood applied to our, our life and we've been forgiven of our sins and God has set us apart. We've been set apart to God, for God, and by God. I hope this message helps encourage you today and draw you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And always remember this, Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Everybody got a Bible? Hold them up. Let me see them. I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 this morning. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going back into our series. Are you serious? Are you serious with the topic this morning? It's time... To get you holy on. Do you understand we've been called to live a holy life? Now, I lost a lot of people when I used that little four-letter word, holy. Because so many people, I know I did years ago, when I would hear the word holy, it would make me step back three steps. Because, you know something, the first thing we think of when we think of holy is perfection. And I guarantee you there's not a person in this room that doesn't realize their imperfections. Amen? But that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about perfection when we're talking about living a holy life. We're talking about a life that's surrendered, that's set apart. Amen? And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. If you'll stand to your feet out of reverence for reading of the Word of God, we're going to begin with verse number 6 of chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, that is serious. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken or foolish are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day of the Lord Jesus Christ be sober, be serious, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So saith the Word of God. Father, bless the reading of your Word today. Use this living and powerful Word to impact our lives this morning, to change us, to transform us into the men, the women, the boys and girls you wish us to be. Holy Ghost, right now, move across our hearts and our minds. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive what you have in store for us today. Give us the ability to be serious and aware wait to you today, Lord. Father God, move now. And Father God, I just ask you to be most gracious and humble, gracious and merciful to me today as I humble myself before you, God. Forgive me where I failed you, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me now, Father, that I can stand before you above reproach to ask for your mercy and grace. Father God, let your words be my words. Your thoughts, my thoughts. Your love in my heart, Jesus, that it flows out, it touches every one in this room. In Jesus' name I pray and say, I love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 
First thing I want you to know today is, is as we look at these scriptures we read, there's a couple of words I want to bring out. And one is where Paul says, uh, therefore let us not sleep. That word sleep is not giving the idea of laying down in your bed and resting. That is giving us the idea of a watchman on the wall overlooking the city that has neglected his duties or have gotten distracted by other things, amen, and allowed the enemy to come in. It is time for the church to wake up, amen. It is time for the church to rise up. Can somebody hear me today? We need to come out of our slumber for in the last days. We need, to be, we need to be going forth as the army of Jesus Christ to touch this lost and dying world. So we need to awake out of sleep. Uh, we don't need to be sleep as I do others, but let us watch, be vigilant. I, I, I hate to say this, but too many in the church have stopped paying attention. They, they've gotten, they've gotten uh, how do I, they, they, begin, they begin to take God and their, and their responsibility to God for granted. Amen. I, I don't see the excitement in a lot of people anymore. I, I, don't see the, I don't see the desire that I used to see. And, and you know, yes, we're, we're, living in, we're, living, we're living in perilous times. But that doesn't mean we give up. That doesn't mean that we sit down and be... Listen, the more they try to silence me, the more I'm going to shout, amen? The more they want to tell me, well, you know, you're being intolerant, no, the more I want to love them. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's time for the church to be vigilant, to be vibrant. And I want to ask you, are you vibrant in your relationship with Jesus? Does, he, does the mention of his name excite you? The thought, of, the thought of being able to run to your prayer closet and come into his presence anytime, does that just get your heart to pounding and give you a quickening? It does me. We need to be vigilant. We need to wake up. And he goes on to say, and be sober, that is, be serious. Be serious. You know, I've seen some of you be real serious about your favorite sports team. I, I know people that have whole rooms in their houses dedicated to their favorite team. Whole rooms dedicated to their favorite race driver. And don't let the grandbabies have a ball game. You will, listen, you'll move heaven and earth, change every schedule on your calendar to be there. Because you're serious. Why can't we be that way about Jesus? Why can't we be that? Why can't we be that diligent? Why can't we be that vibrant? Am I getting through to somebody? Say amen. You know, I, I've learned this, that when I put him first, he lines everything. When I get serious about him, he lines everything else up in my life. When I get serious about prayer, when I get serious about coming, am I getting through, get serious about coming in his presence? You know what? He gets serious with me. There's so many people today that are playing church. Oh, they put on a good front. Amen. They, they got the right words, but they're not serious. They, they put Jesus on the back burner. We need to, we need to understand today that we're different than the rest of the world. And we got to prove, we got to live a holy life. Listen to what Paul says down in, a, down in a verse number 8. But let us who are of the day. We're of the day. We're not of the night. We're of the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who walks in me shall not walk in darkness. He said, those of us who are of the day, be sober, be serious. Wake up. Get serious. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. In other words, be holy. Live holy. 
And I know some people, so we're going to talk about it more in just a minute, but I know a lot of people say, well, I'm no different than everybody else. Well, if you're not different than everybody else in the world, you know what? You're not saved. Because a saved person is different. We're not the same as the rest of the world. The Bible calls us in 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10, but ye are a chosen generation. You are, a, listen, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. I like being called peculiar, amen? Praise God. I'm peculiar because I love Jesus, praise God. But that word peculiar also means you're a bought people because you've been purchased with a price, Amen. And that is of the precious blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross for remission of your sin. A peculiar people. Listen, that ye should show forth the praises of him. Now, you know what? Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. This morning through song, sir, I don't know about you. Y'all lifted my spirits this morning. Amen. To see y'all, to hear y'all singing like you were singing. To see y'all on the feet praising God. To see you not ashamed to offer up the sacrifice of praise to him. That moved my heart this morning. Amen. I, and, I, and I tell you what, that moved. I, I, I was doing all I could do not to break down up here and just fall into a heap in worship. Amen. Because, you know, that's what we, we got to show forth the praises of him. And not only in this sanctuary, but on that street out there. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? out there among the lost of this world. Because you know what? When they see you getting excited about the Lord Jesus Christ, when they see you getting pumped up, they see you offering up that sacrifice of praise, they're going to think you're peculiar, but then they're going to get curious. Hello? And they're going to want to have a little something of what you got. Amen? I want everybody to take a drink out of my cup. Glory to God. Amen? But see, that, that when, when, you know, let me tell you something. Every, it, it's, anybody can walk around with the old me's and the old my's. You ever met people like that that were just so negative every time you try to talk to them? Well, how are you? Well, you know, my bursitis is just about to, about to wear me out and, and, and all the bills are due and I ain't got nothing and, and yada, yada. How many of you ever met people like that? You, every time you talk to them, they, and they bring you down. Do, would you want to hang out around somebody like that all the time? Well, you know what? That, that's, a lot, that's a lot of the things we see in the church today. I knew a lady one time that she was a greeter in the church. She handed out the church bulletins, and she shook everybody's hands when they come to the door. But don't you dare ask her how she was doing. Because she would tell you every negative thing, every bad thing that was going on in her life. And before you could get to the sanctuary, you were so depressed, you didn't know what to do with yourself. Amen? The pastor eventually had to move her off the door because she depressed people. Now, I got news for you. I got lit and that's a true story. And, and, and I got news for you. People don't want to come into that kind of atmosphere. Would you? No, they want to come into where things are going on, where there's vibrancy, where there's people excited, where there's people happy, where there's people full of joy, where people are raising up their voice and giving God praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Now, look, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that, listen, you take your problems to the Lord, but you remember this. Don't you wallow in that pity pit. Amen. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. You begin to speak faith. You begin to speak the power of God relief. Somebody needs to heal me right now. If you'll quit speaking, if you'll quit speaking that old negative nearly stuff and you start speaking praise to God, you're going to see something going to happen in your life. Can somebody give him a little praise? Show forth his praises. Get up! And be counted with what? What? Well, but preacher, what? What? What if I'm the only one in the sanctuary? So what? That's the rest of them's loss. Amen. 
I'll never forget one morning, I had a visiting uh, praise leader one morning, and, and I was standing, I was sitting over here, and, and, and the Spirit of God began to move in this place, and I was on my feet. I had my eyes closed, and I was praising God. And I said, I wonder if anybody else is feeling what I'm feeling. And I went to open my eyes, and God said, don't you dare. And I said, what, Lord? He said, don't you dare. This ain't about you, them, and me. This is about you and me. You don't worry about what they do. Amen. You know, that's the kind of attitude we got to have when we show forth praise to God. We can't worry about what everybody else is doing. It's about you and God. It's about you getting excited. Because I'm, I'm here to tell you, church, it takes one match to start a fire and one fire to turn into a blazing inferno. You get excited and you show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness, out of sin, into his marvelous light. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God? You're no longer, you're no longer your own. Do you realize, do you realize that you've been bought with a price today? So many people say, well, it's my life. I can do it at what I want. Not if you're born again believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You ain't got no, you ain't got no. Ain't that good English? You do not have any say-so anymore. Because this has been turned over to him. See, when you get saved, and see, this is where a lot of people mess up. When you get saved, when you get born again, by faith, you give him all authority, control, and care of your life. Amen? You're no longer, you're no longer, you listen, you're no longer responsible. Do you, do you understand that? You're no longer responsible for what happens in your life. But Jesus is. He stepped up and took the responsibility for your life. Because he bought and paid for you on Calvary's cross. When he shed his blood, he bought you back. See, you, were, you was a slave to sin. Don't look at me so spiritual. You know I'm telling the truth. You was a slave to your fleshly desires and lust in your life. You, uh, you, you was a sinner. I was a sinner. Amen? Amen. The Word of God said there's none righteous, no, not one, for we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. See, he bought and paid for you. He bought you back from slavery. He bought you back from the auction block of sin, amen? And he set you free. Hello, how many of you know you're free? Hello. You know, even though he owns you lock, stock, and barrel, you're still free, amen? But, but, but we, need to, we need to listen. Listen, if we're going to live holy lives, if we're going to live different lives, we've got to be surrendered to him completely. We've got to realize that he's the one that's in control of our life. And let me tell you something, when you let him make the decisions, am I making sense to anybody? I don't know about, I don't, you, know, I don't know about you, I, like, I don't like making decisions. Amen? Because when you make the decisions, you know what? You're responsible. Amen? Uh, 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 you know, God laid a big responsibility on me when he put me here as pastor of this church. But you know what? I don't make the decisions. Because, Brad, I don't want to be responsible. Amen? I let God make the decisions. Amen? I, I, I turn it all over to him. Uh, the day I got saved and called to preach, I give him control of my life. When I come here and took the pastorship of this church, as a matter of fact, I run from it for about three or four months. Amen. Uh, people tell me, why don't you, why don't you, why? I said, no, I don't want a pastor. Amen. I want to evangelize. I want to go. I want to be able to walk in, preach the word, and say, adios amigo, and go on about my business. Amen. But God broke my heart, and he put me here, and I realized that it was his responsibility. And it's, this is his ministry. And your life is his. Hello. You belong to him. It's his responsibility now. You're no longer your own. You need to, you need to let go. If you're going to live a holy life, you got to let go and let God. Quit trying to make your own decisions. Quit trying to do it. I've said this too many times, but I'm going to say it again. Quit trying to do it your way. 
let God do it his way. Give up. You know, that's a word we don't like to hear. We don't like to give up, but let me tell you something. If you want to see, you want to see God move in your life, you better give up. Amen. You are no longer, you've been bought and paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross. You've been redeemed and made clean from the penalty and presence of sin in your life. You've been forgiven by the grace through you for your faith in Jesus Christ. Can somebody give him praise today? So see, we are different. We're not the same. We've been saved by grace. Through faith, and that not of ourselves is a gift of God. We've been redeemed through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So we are different, amen. And we're called to be holy by holy God. Do you understand that? And that word holy, let, let, let's talk about that for just a minute. So many people are afraid of that word. But the, but the word translated in holy from the Greek means this, to be set apart. Hello? To be separate to be sanctified and consecrated to God, for God, by God. That's all it means. That means that you have, you have given, you have letting him have it. Amen? You have, you have let him set you apart. That you've got, you've put away sin and self. And you've, you've given yourself over to God. You've given him control and he set you apart from the rest of the world. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16, now this, what I'm going to read is not a suggestion. It's a command. Listen, listen. But as he which has called you is holy, set apart. So you be holy, set apart in all manner of conversation. That is in all manner of conduct. Do you realize God not only wants you to be set apart in your church life, but your show, social life, your work life, your private life, and your family life. He wants you to be different. He wants you to be holy. He wants you to be surrendered to Him, consecrated to Him. Let Him set you apart from everybody else. Because it is written, listen now, be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh, get lit. Church, we might still be in this world, but we don't belong to this world. Hello? We, we might be in the world, but we don't belong to this world. Not if you're a blood-bought, born-again, believing child of God. You're just passing through here. Amen? This ain't your home. Hello? You're a gospel gypsy. You look, Guess what? You, you, your citizenship. Come on, somebody. Your citizenship is in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what a lot of people don't get. You're not waiting to become a citizen of heaven. If you're born again, you already are a citizen of heaven. Amen? And, and you don't belong here. You are different than everybody else. You are holy. You have been declared righteous by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Sin no, this is, oh, oh. Sin no longer has dominion over you. I, I get so upset with people when I hear them pray, Lord, forgive me of the sins I'm about to receive. Huh? Forgive me of the sins I'm about to commit. Forgive me of the sins I'm going to do throughout the day, Lord. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't pray that way. You just defeated yourself before you left the house. Amen? What you need to be praying is sin, you no longer have dominion over me. I am a blood-bought, born-again, child of God. No temptation, no, no stronghold is going to have control over me. I'm going to yield my life to the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to walk above those things. Amen. And I've known people that, 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 that pray, pray that other prayer, that negative prayer. And you know what happened to them? They go out and stumble and fall every time. Amen. No, 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 no. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a holy man. And when I say that, that I'm not saying that to, to, to bring to bring any applause to me. I'm just saying I've been set apart. My God has set me apart. He's given me everything I need. 
to walk above the stumbling blocks. Hello? He's given me his Holy Ghost. Amen? Uh, I've been filled by the Spirit, glory to God. And I'm going to hold His hand and I'm going to walk in the Spirit so I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, there's so many, so many children of God today that are just adamant about uh, uh, that Holy Ghost. They're adamant about not having anything to do with Him. Well, if you don't want to have anything to the Holy Ghost, guess what? You can't be saved. Hello? If you can't be filled, Hello, you got to, Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. You ever been in a, you ever been in a church where there wasn't no move of the Spirit? I'd just soon go to the house take a nap. I don't know about y'all, I can get more rest, amen. Praise God. I want to be where the Spirit's moving. I want, I, want to be, I want to be where God's showing up and showing out, amen. I want to be in a holy place, a place that's been set apart for His honor and His glory. I want to be around holy people that's been set apart to serve God and are excited about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because we are different. We're not of the world. We're just passing through here. Our citizenship, our conversation is in heaven from whence we also look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us ain't looking. Hell, I don't know about y'all, but I look for him. I'm looking for him all the time. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready. Amen? Uh, I, I, I believe that scripture where the, where the Bible says, And the Lord himself ascended from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ are going to rise, and then we who are alive and remain are going to be caught up with them to be with the Lord. Amen? I'm looking for it because this is not my home, and I'm homesick. Hello? I'm ready, but until then, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be excited. I'm going to be excited and set myself apart to do the work he's called me to do, and that's preach the gospel, amen, to serve him. We've got to be ready. We've got to be quickened by the Spirit of God. What about you? Are you serious today? Have you set yourself apart? You, you know, like I said a while ago, we're not waiting to become citizens of heaven. We're not waiting to become children of God. We're not waiting to become heirs and join heirs with Jesus. We already are. And we need to live that way. We need to, when people see us, people need to see Jesus. Y'all remember when you was little and you go off somewhere without mom and daddy? My mom would always tell me, I don't know about y'all's mom, my mom always tell me, she said, don't you show yourself. And you better remember where you come from. Amen? That meant I better not do nothing that was going to embarrass my mom and daddy. Because when I got home, and guess what? When I got home, they know about it. Somebody, you live in a small town, somebody going to call them and tell them. Amen? And when I'd walk in that door, she'd be waiting on me. You know, we, when, we, when we walk the streets of our city, we need to remember we don't need to show ourselves. And we need to remember where we come from. We come from Jesus. See, see we, we are not waiting to become citizens of heaven. We're not waiting to become his children. We're not waiting to become heirs of joy. We already are. And we need to live as such. Romans 8, 14 through 17 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father, I, I was at a, let me let me say this. I was at a uh, I was at a revival one night, and an older gentleman got up and stomped his feet and turned around about three times. I can't stand it when people call God Daddy. I think that's disrespectful. What did Jesus teach us to call him? He said, "When you pray, say Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. He's your He's your heavenly Father." your heavenly daddy, and we need to be living as such. We need to be doing it to bring him honor and glory. Verse 16 said, The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. 
Do you hear that? And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. So if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified with him. We need to separate ourselves from the world. Do you, do you understand that? There's so many born-again children of God try to keep running the way they used to run. Well, I just want to be accepted. Well, you ain't never going to be accepted. They didn't accept Jesus, did they? And eventually they're going to reject you. We need to separate ourselves. The Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate. We're no longer of this world Paul said all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Everything we do should bring honor and glory to God. We should live a righteous and holy life dedica dedicated to Him. That doesn't mean that you can't go hunting and fishing. That doesn't mean that you can't get together with your lady friends and just have a day of shopping. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You can't gather together with other saints of God and have a picnic and have a good time. Amen play baseball or football or whatever you want to do. They ain't, God does not, God does not, He doesn't stop us from doing all that. But what He does say is be ye separate from the world. Come out from among them. 2 Corinthians 6 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial or the devil, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Are you willing today to be separate for God? Are you willing today to get serious? Hello? That doesn't mean you got to go lock yourself up in the house and pray 24 hours a day, seven days a week and read the Bible. No. It does mean you got to set aside time for that. My favorite time of the day <coughs> is when I get up in the mornings. Lisa and John still asleep. I go into the living room. Dog's laying over there in the corner on his bed still. The house is quiet. And I sit down in my chair and I say, All right, Lord, here I am. Come to me. I might just sit there and listen or I might put on some music. But what I'm trying to say is I begin my day just me and God. So what if I have to give up 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes of sleep. It's worth it. To be able to sit in the presence of my God. There's sometimes I'll feel the Lord about 3.30, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning shake me and say, come on. I want to spend a little time with you. And I've learned to get up and go. Because you know what? He'll give me what? He'll give me the refreshing and rest I need to go out, go throughout my day. As long as I'm willing to set myself apart, to be holy, for He's holy. He's not calling you to be perfect because you know what? Everybody looking at the preacher say, "Amen." He knows you. He knows your flaws. He knows your shortcomings. But if you'll surrender all authority, control, and care in him, Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He'll do it for you if you're willing, if you're serious today to walk holy before a holy God. How I many know Abraham was called a friend of God? Abraham wasn't perfect. 
Amen. Abraham was a liar. Did you know that? Go read about him. He lied. He wasn't no super saint. But what Abraham had going for him, that he was faithful enough to trust God and to set himself apart. And he was called a friend of God. And it was imputed to him, because of his faith, it was imputed to him or accounted to him for righteousness. In other words, God declared him holy. You want to be declared holy today? Get serious with God. He gets serious with you. All it takes is one step of faith. If you're willing, God's willing. Well, preacher, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, if I'm, if I can't. No, you can't. But God can. Only thing you got to do is say, Lord, I'm ready. And He'll begin to pour out on you His holiness, His righteousness, His strength, and most especially His. Spirit. Because, see, he wants you to walk, live that way and to walk that way. And he'll give you everything you need. If you'll get serious, he'll get serious with you. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul again. I hope you enjoyed today's message and it has helped encourage you in some way and draw you ever closer to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there may be some of you out there today that's made a decision of faith to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're wondering how you can do that. Well, it's so simple today. You just confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for you, was buried in the tomb, and rose on the third day to become the cornerstone of your faith. And you can do so right now by saying this simple prayer of faith and meaning it, saying, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Right now, Jesus, by faith, I turn from sin and self, and I turn to you, Jesus, and I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. I love you, Jesus. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you just become a born-again child of God. And we would love to hear of your decision here at Albany Family Worship Center. And you can contact us by writing to us at AFWC 3024 Kensington Court, Albany, Georgia 31721. You can contact us by telephone at 229 Four three four zero three four two, or you can send us an email at myafwc at gmail.com. That's myafwc at gmail.com. We hope you and your family come and visit with us soon. We'd love to see you. And have a blessed day today. And always remember this, Jesus loves you.